It's just a weird feeling like not really having a team and like not really belonging to a team or like even really knowing what position I'm playing, stuff like that. So I am really anxious to like know where I'm going, know what I'm going to have to be working on and know, knowing who I'll be working with. Right now I just sort of feel like I'm in no man's land, just sort of floating around until I find out what happens. So I'm definitely ready for a draft day to be here or be here by now. So. Offensive line, Peter Skaronski, the freshman left tackle, has been so good, true freshman. Guy out of Chicago area, great left tackle. Peter Skaronski, 77. Look for him, Skaronski, one of the best left tackles in the country. Look, he just stands back in the pocket. There is no one even close to him. See Skaronski, the freshman left tackle, holding him down. A huge hole, excellent block by Peter Skaronski, and you saw 77 drive his man across the face of the defense. The guy who's playing pretty well though right now is Skaronski, that left tackle. They are not getting any pressure off that left side at all. This is someone you should watch because Skaronski is such a difference maker as a young offensive lineman. Peter Skaronski is that good. You're looking at a first round pick at left tackle. Peter right now is in a battle with Paris Johnson at Ohio State for who's going to be the first tackle selected in this upcoming NFL draft. The guy's a total stud, can do it all. Someone to watch on the left side of that offensive line today. Peter's kind of a throwback type of player. He's got a, a mean streak, a, a nastiness about how he plays. All of the physical tools, all of the physical attributes that you want in an offensive lineman, obviously he has the speed, the, the quickness, the power. His highlights are pretty uncommon, the stuff he does. Going against guys like Aiden Hutchinson, you know, Karlofkis from Purdue a couple years ago. I mean, he's just very technical in what he's doing. So everything, like, uh, his preparation is sound. Like He knows who he's going against, what their mo favorite move is. I mean, I know that just because I'm his roommate. I see him preparing. <laughs> He'll be like standing in our kitchen doing his pass sets. He's, he's nuts like that. I mean, when he's, when he's not here, he's always, he would always be sending me clips of film, um, something that he was seeing. So it's his preparation that really allows him to excel in the field. But I mean, he handles them well. He, 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 you know, he does his thing on the field. You know, when you have a left tackle like Peter Skronsky, you, you feel pretty confident. You can put him on an island from a pass protection standpoint. Crucial downs, key parts of the game, we're going to run the ball behind Peter Skronsky, you know, and then, you know, for the last few years, he's had Josh Preeb next to him, you know, two really talented guys. Uh, it, it gives you a, a, a lot of, you know, you're excited that the play's going to work. From Chicago, live live and grew up 25 minutes from here, um, just down the road in Park Ridge. Um, so just kind of born and raised in the area. It's a town, honestly, with a, a lot of great people, just like all the towns that surround the Evanston neighborhood. But something about Park Ridge that stands out is the the passion for football. I think one of the best things was when he was about four or five years old. His dad said to me. I've got a tackle for you. He didn't say I have a quarterback. I don't have a receiver. He, he, he knew exactly, you know, where his son would fit in because uh, obviously his grandfather was a NFL legend. His grandfather uh, was a uh, ring of honor uh, center and tackle for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, played for, uh, for Lombardi in that era, captain of the team. That was always sort of, you know, what I looked up to growing up was him, him be on those great Packer teams and root for the Packers and want to be like him. But you know, it also you know goes to my dad too, who also played football, um, played defensive line at Yale. He wanted to play so bad he would set up. One of my brothers or sister gave him a tackling dummy one year for Christmas, and he set up the tackling dummy in the backyard, and, and he would just spend literally hours out there tackling, blocking that dummy by himself with little or no help He'd in our backyard. So he, he convinced us that uh, at a very young age that this was something he really wanted in the worst way, but 
I mean, and he didn't play football until sort of, I don't know, was it middle school? I guess it was middle yeah, school. 12, he was six. Yeah, so he didn't play, um, but he did, he always loved it. He loved the, the sport. He loved the competitive nature of it. He loved watching football. From him being in middle school, I remember hearing about him. Hey, there's this sixth, seventh grader who's unbelievably talented. He's gonna be really, really good at Maine South, but he's just the best kid. He's the nicest kid. And, you know, believe it or not, back then, he was obviously big for the kids in his grade, but when he was a freshman, it's not like he was the biggest lineman on the field. You know, like he still had to grow into his body and. Freshman year in high school, he was 6'3", 225. And he was, uh, you know, he's put on the sophomore team as a freshman and started and, you know, did well. Now, his grandfather went to his, one of his last grade school games and looked at him out in the field after like three plays and said, you know, Bob, that's a Big Ten lineman out there. And then uh, I would say his uh, first game junior year, Drove the guy 15 yards downfield, put him on his back. He had 17 pancakes against a very good football team. And you just knew this guy's an All-American. You know, not just a, a Big Ten player, but an All-American and, and probably an NFL player. We're gonna see Peter Skaronsky on the field in the next group. He's the number one lineman on DJ's board. But you talk about bloodlines, we talk about it all the time. His grandfather, Bob Skaronsky, a former captain for the Green Bay Packers. At the combine, dude, you're almost 35 inch vertical. Almost, yeah, not there, not quite. Yeah. But I think you were right at the top of, of the entire group of O-linemen. It's yeah. pretty special to be able to go at your size to, go, to get that high, yeah. right? I think it's more just good genes. <laughs> Kind of looked out in that regard, but yeah. you know, jumps aren't football either. So, right, right. What matters what you do on the field. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Yeah, thank you. And I uh, can't wait to see where you land in the NFL awesome. this year. Me too. Yeah, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. He's got a real strong base. He plays into his legs. Some guys just get up, up top. They get a little up right. We know how good his contact balance is. He's powerful and plays with good bend. I would be shocked if he's still on the board past 15. So what are you going to add to a team as far as what do you think I talk about technician, talk yeah. about consistency, what, what's your trademark? Yeah, I think go back to the consistency thing, you know, I think when a team gets me, they're going to have someone that they can rely on every game and yeah. to do his job and, you know, be a foundational piece and help them win games. What do you think you've shown off here for these, yeah, we decided to do the skill. Yeah, yeah, you know, I hope I've shown off my athleticism and yeah. my technique and just my ability to take coaching too, obviously a lot of online coaches here, yeah. so you know, throwing out a lot of, you know, coaching and stuff like that, so I was looking to get better. He was highly recruited, right away. He just kept progressing into the dominant player he is today, right? So even at Maine South, I'm hearing that schools like Notre Dame and Stanford, they're leaving the high school. People are there to talk to him every single day. Even if he got an offer, he really wouldn't share it with many people. He would never tweet. So recruiters would come in and say, hey, I see you got you know, four offers. He already had 20 offers, but he would just agree with them and say, yeah, I have four. Well, I don't know how many offers he ended up having. I, you know, everybody in the, at the top of Power Five was interested or offered him directly. Yeah, when we first got to know Peter, it was through his high school coaches. Dave and Sarah and everybody over at Maine South said, hey, we've got this freshman that's going to be special. And I was like, okay, Dave, whatever. And then we saw his varsity video and it was like, oh yeah, he is the real deal. Obviously, academics was a big thing for me, which Northwestern sort of checked. And then I think just culture, I think, really mattered to me and being somewhere where I felt like I could fit in really well with the guys. 
But I think what set it apart was that his elite academics were going to make it a much smaller pool of schools he was going to look at. The um, rapport he established right away with Kurt uh, Anderson and with Coach Fitz um, was important in his decision. But every time I would leave a visit from somewhere else, I'd think, hey, I don't think I could really picture myself saying no to Coach Fitz and Coach Anderson saying, hey, I'm going somewhere else. He just seemed like a perfect fit for the minute we started the relationship. To be a candidate, to be a scholarship level player, and then you, you couple that with dominant video, uh, he may be one of the earliest scholarship offers that I've ever given out. Sean Slater is a special player. My first year as the O-line coach was 2019, and so had, had Rashawn, um, he was playing right tackle the year before, and I moved him to left tackle. He worked tirelessly in the film room, uh, learning the techniques, not being shy about uh, attempting a new way of playing offensive line for him. And so he went out and attempted those techniques until he mastered them, and then he just kind of took off from there. I mean, I knew left tackle was not really <laughs> going to change when I got here with him here. My only real goal was to make the travel team and hopefully get on the field in some capacity. Um, I wasn't saying that, oh, I'm going to start this position or I'm going to start day one or anything like that. I just wanted to just just try to prove myself for the team in a sense and wherever that, wherever that fell, that's where I fell. major development in college football, two powerhouse conferences, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, canceling the fall season because of COVID. There's too much uncertainty at this point in time uh, in, in our country. Twenty twenty, from a football perspective for us, it, it was we're playing, we're not playing, we're playing. And uh, it made it tough on Rashawn. And he had to make a decision on what he was going to do. And with conversations with myself and his family, uh, you know, he made the decision to, to opt out of that year. It's such a crazy time, just, you know, with COVID and season getting canceled, and combine getting canceled and everything. With the 13th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Rashawn Slater Jr. Tackle, Northwestern. You know, athletically, the minute Peter stepped on campus, you could see the functional strength, you could see the athleticism. We knew he was going to compete pretty much at the end of the first week of summer conditioning for, for a starting role. That's it! Good! I think once we started going, started practicing a little bit, I, I started to realize that here's a guy that, that obviously is highly intelligent, but he's got a photographic memory. And so he was able to pick things up very, very fast. And so with Peyton Ramsey, I wanted to be able to put uh, somebody that could protect his blind side. Um, and even though he was a freshman, I felt like Peter was the best candidate to, to do that. A couple weeks later, we were doing like our walkthroughs and you know, all of a sudden Pete's taking reps with the you know, first team offense. We're just like, dude, like, you're taking reps with the ones. That's pretty crazy. Like, and he's like, yeah, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to start. And we're like, that's what I mean. Like, he's just humble like that. And all of a sudden, the season's around the corner in Maryland. That was week one. And I mean, he's getting ready to suit up as a 18, 19 year old. There's a true freshman starting for Northwestern. Yeah, We've not called his name yet. Peter Skaronsky, right there, number 77, left tackle. He has been outstanding, filling the void for Rashawn Slater, who was going to be the starting left tackle, who opted to go get ready for the NFL draft in August, and Skaronsky has stepped right in beautifully. And 2020 goes from we're playing, we're not playing, we are playing, to Peter making a start in his first college game at left tackle in the Big Ten, and then leading us all the way into a Big Ten championship as a true freshman at left tackle. I mean, something that's pretty rare in our game. I don't think that's ever happened here before. Uh, and to see the high level of success that Peter had uh, was foreshadowing what was to come.
moje bobe. Um, I think uh, uh, right from the get-go, he was able to prepare himself. I felt like he already understood how to take good notes. He was very organized. He asked good questions. Our first spring together, we, we kind of ended up doing pretty much everything together in terms of the film study, extra footwork that we wanted to do, but that kind of carried on to just the rest of the time he was here. We were always, you know, texting each other, when we could meet up, do some extra footwork. Good. He was like another coach at times. Like he just had such an eye for little ways that I could maybe make my game better or we could communicate better, execute a block better together. I think there's a mentality aspect of that too of, you know, as an offensive lineman being a really, really hard worker and someone who's constantly striving to get better every single day, no matter what level of success you have. Um, and I think that's something that Rashawn really started here. I think that's a mentality I've tried to carry throughout my career here. Skorowski, that left tackle. We talked about Rashawn Slater last year. He opted out as a first round draft pick in the NFL. And Peter Skoronsky may be the next in line. One of the great left tackle, had a great season as a freshman. Showing off right now, he's not just a pass blocker. Out there road grade on that offensive line right now. Peter's freshman year, you just you, you saw the consistency of play, and as he gets to the offseason, now here comes the accolades, right? Freshman All-American, you know, one of the top players in the country in that class, and you know, he deserved it. He deserved the, the, the accolades. Again, didn't change his personality. I think if not anything else, added gasoline to a fire burning inside him to keep getting better and improve. This offensive line played their best game of the season against Rutgers. Peter Skaronski is the best player up there, left tackle. He's a sophomore and a special guy. The Michigan game, uh, our sophomore year, uh, he was he was on an island pretty much the whole, a large part of that game, he was on an island against some of the best pass rushers uh, that year. and just absolutely locked everyone down. It's crazy how, how much publicity he was getting. People knew, like, you're right, he was, he was gonna be a first round pick. He's going to be a first round pick. And because he was so humble, he just, we just never talked about it. Just like Coach said, we gotta look in the mirror. Because this off season is gonna be, it's gonna be hard, but nobody can outwork us this off season. I, I saw his development as a leader each year that he was here. And this last year, being a captain, uh, he was tremendous for the guys in that room to be able to use his voice. And to see him develop into someone that everybody looks up to in terms of when he speaks, everyone's going to listen. Everyone's going to follow his lead because when he leads, he does it from a stance of being well-grounded and really, really humble, and he works hard for everything that he's earned. I was always just thinking to myself, like, Sometimes I always like practice with my friends who like go to like other Midwest schools, Big Ten schools that are like kind of in the middle of nowhere. Let's be honest. Like you don't, you can't really beat this view of like right on the lake here, looking out at the Chicago skyline. Like this is pretty awesome. You can't really beat this, in my opinion. This is to me like the, the prettiest, nicest campus in the country. I'm actually gonna take a picture of it right now. From an NFL perspective, I think you see a can't miss, and I hate to put that label on him, but he's a guy that can play all five positions. And my humble opinion, there's no question he could be a left tackle. He's got the feet, he's got the athleticism, he's got the strength, he's got the toughness, he's got the football acumen. Uh, there'll be a lot let leading into the draft about this measurement or that measurement, uh, but I'll just tell anybody just to watch the tape and it'll speak for itself. So as he gets over the hurdle of matriculating to the NFL and getting comfortable like everybody, I see a similar trajectory uh, that we, we see in Rashawn Slater. An opportunity to be an instant impact player, an all pro level player, a leader of an organization, and someone that'll be just an absolutely relentless positive teammate that'll make a huge difference from the minute he gets in the organization. I think uh, his future in the NFL is at least 12 years of a starter. Um, I would think an all-pro many times, and I know his goal was to play in the NFL, but I don't think he set it to play. I think he set it to be the best in the NFL. Whatever organization takes him and wherever they decide to play him, you're, you're getting a guy that's going to be 
uh, a staple and a landmark uh, type of player uh, on the offensive line. He's very easy going. He's going to assimilate to the room real fast, but you're also getting a pro. Uh, you're going to get somebody that knows how to prepare, knows how to train, knows how to study the game, and you're not going to have to worry about who he's going to become off the field because of, of his character, uh, the way that he was raised, and, and the, his belief systems.